had a niggling suspicion that the things you're buying are getting smaller over the years? Like how there's more air in this bag than actual chips. Toilet paper seems to be running out faster. Even chocolate bars feel thinner. Your gut feel might just be right. You know there's a name for that. It's called shrinkflation. In this episode, I want to find out more about inflation's sneaky cousin, shrinkflation. Which products have shrunk and how bad is this going to get? This chocolate bar is the current Cadbury family size pack, which weighs 180 grams. Now, 12 years ago, this same chocolate bar weighed 250 grams. That is 70 grams more. This is just one of the products that the company downsized over the years. Others include Frito Frogs and the Dairy Milk Standard Bar. I want to know why. I reached out to Mondelez International, the company that houses the Cadbury brand. They declined an interview, but they did reply to our email. Saying their product portfolio is created based on consumer preferences and needs. So companies often frame product downsizing as being beneficial for us. For instance, smaller portions means there are less calories and therefore it is healthier for us. And smaller portions also mean there's less need for lots of packaging, which means a reduction in packaging waste. But at the end of the day, are we getting less for what we pay? What's behind these official sounding reasons? I reached out to consumer advocate Edgar Dvosky, who has been following the downsizing phenomenon in the US for 27 years. So Edgar, what is the key reason behind companies shrinking their products? Companies, they usually give me three answers. They say, well, the price of raw materials has gone up or transportation costs have gone up. A competitor raised the price, so we're just being competitive and we're matching their price. How long has this been going on? For decades. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing candy bars as a kid getting smaller uh, every few years. Wow, okay. And which are the kind of products that usually get downsized? Well, there's almost nothing that's excluded. Potato chips, candy of all different types, toilet paper. Sheets get smaller, narrower, shorter, fewer number of sheets on the roll. Whoa. This is the 20 year history of Breyers ice cream. It's one of the popular brands in the United States. Forever, ice cream came in this size package, 64 ounces. It was a half a gallon of ice cream. Then they decided to downsize it the first time. And you have the second package here. This is 56 ounces. They took out a full cup, eight ounces. And then in 2008, they took out another cup. So the current size of the product and other brands too is 48 ounces. So you lost two cups over the span of 20 years. Here's another example of cereal. The packages look identical mm -hmm. side by side on the shelf. But when you put them sideways, it's narrower. And do they tell consumers that they're changing it? Oh, you're, you're never going to see on the package. They don't announce that. They always announce the positive stuff. Yeah. You know, new bonus pack, 10% more, 50 extra sheets. That's why it becomes a sneaky way to raise the price. Is it going to get worse? I don't see an end to it. Shrinkflation tends to be cyclical. In times of inflation, like we're going through now, mm -hmm. you see more of it because manufacturers are under pressure because of rising costs of production, for example. Edgar showed me all kinds of products in the US that have shrunk over the years, but it's not limited to the US. According to a study by the UK's Office of National Statistics, or ONS, between 2012 and 2017, more than 2,500 products shrank in the UK, even as most prices stayed the same. And in Japan, a man has documented nearly 400 examples of shrinking consumer goods after he noticed his chocolate biscuits had gotten smaller two years ago. 
In Singapore, I reached out to different agencies and organizations for data. I want to know how many products in Singapore have shrunk over the years. But no one here seems to be following this phenomenon. I even tried to scrape through some data for companies' financial reports, but it all led me to a dead end. Local inflation is projected to rise between 1.5 to 2.5% as global supply constraints are expected to persist this year. Which means, possibly, there could be some downsizing. I wonder if it's already happening. I managed to get hold of three products with subtle size differences for a little experiment. There's no difference in price for the same two products, despite one having shrunk. Hello, welcome to my pop-up stall, which has nothing to sell, but maybe gain a bit of knowledge. Okay. What do you think is the difference between these two cans of Coke? Besides the design? Uh, I think it's the same. This says less sugar, so this is less sugar. Same. Let's look at this. This one has 330 ml. This one has 320. So essentially, this is the difference. Whoa. Does it surprise you that there's more? Yeah. How do you feel? If you just told me that, oh, there's a 10 ml difference, I probably wouldn't be too upset. But they never tell you. Yeah, that is true. I was thinking the coke was because it's more handy, that's so why they make it slimmer. I didn't think that they had dropped the weight along the way. I thought slimmer so easier for you to carry and drink, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That was in my head. Uh. Let's try another one. Chocolate. Is that? Now we will check the weight. Check the weight. Ah, okay. Yeah. You want to feel it? Carry it. It looks like more. This the one that you chose is 40 grams. This one is? 50 grams. 50 grams. Yeah. This one? It's 40 grams and 50 grams. Oh, it's thinner. I see. Yeah, right? Does it surprise you that there's a different amount of chocolate in each? Yes, actually. Unless it's put side by side, I wouldn't have noticed. And last one, the chips. Which one do you think has the most chips? Probably this one. Okay. Yes, these two. Mm, it doesn't really make much a difference. I suspect it's the same size. It looks like this one. This one? Okay. So look at the weight. This is 158. And this should be 158, right? 149. But it's 149. Yeah. And this is 147. Does it surprise you? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So all three of them have different amounts of chips in it. In fact, this chip, this box. This chip, this box. Okay. Oh my god. Did you ever think of it that way? No, never. The chip size is smaller, right? So every chip, they save so much of the chip. So overall, the company saves money because they're selling you less chips in this box. How do you feel? Shock change. Not so good. <laughs> <laughs> because same size, but actually you see properly, it's less weight. So what's happening is, it's what we call shrinkflation. Instead of paying more for a product, they're repackaging it and giving you less of the same product. Very deceiving. <laughs> So almost everyone I spoke with didn't catch the difference in size and volume. I'm curious to know exactly why it's so hard to notice these changes. Let me see that. No way. Most people I've spoken to don't realize that some of the everyday products they are buying is shrinking. Our companies deliberately hiding the truth. Professor Klaus Wurtenbock has decades of experience consulting companies on their pricing strategies. He's going to share with me a few secrets. So do companies try and hide the fact that they are shrinking the sizes of their products? Yes. There's a scientific basis to this called psychophysics, mm -hmm. essentially how people perceive changes in sizes. Okay. And it turns out that when volumes change in multiple dimensions, our perception is relatively insensitive to these changes in actual sizes. And companies are using this when they make things smaller, they do this in three dimensions. What do you mean by three dimensions? Changing more than one thing, the diameter and the length, the width, 
the height, the more changes in multiple aspects, the harder it is for to track. Ah, uh, so I'm no longer looking at apples for apples. It's apples which are now apples in a six pack, smaller sizes with styrofoam packaging and all sorts of different things. Exactly. But wow. perhaps let's go to our lab, show you some examples. Right, Steve? Look at these two here. This one looks bigger than this. simply because it's taller, but at the same time, the diameter is smaller. Okay. So it's changes in one, two, three dimensions. So same thing here, these two containers of potato chips. This yeah. one is a little taller, but has a smaller diameter. This one has less volume than this one does. And when it's taller, I somehow oh, yeah. have the sense that it might actually be more. Exactly. There are much simpler examples that don't actually okay. require any science to figure out what's going on. If you look at these herbs here. Let me see that. No way. And these are brand this new, is, right? These are brand new. And it's sealed. This is how they come in the store. The price is the same. See. And the thing is, usually the wrapping, I guess, might go all the way up to the neck. So yes. I actually can't see what's inside. And that's exactly what companies expect. Consumers don't notice. Now let's move on to peanut butter, perhaps. Peanut butter. I like that. Which one is larger? Larger. I don't know. They, they look the same. They feel the same way. I figure they're the same. Okay. Now look underneath. What do you see? Oh, the kind of the arch. Deeper dimple than this one, which means the package size is reduced. The volume is reduced. That shaves off this much peanut butter. This is the difference Ooh, between wow. the larger and the smaller volume. Easily enough for a few peanut butter sandwiches. I'm just curious now, what is the weight? Mine says 462 grams. This one is 510 grams. That's almost 50 grams in that. I don't think you would go to the supermarket and look at it like no. this. Often companies change packaging, not so that can actually implicitly increase the price. But often companies simply want to refresh the brand. They want to give consumers something new mm. while also cutting the volume. So here's an example of that. Mm. So this is the old candy bar, which mm -hmm. came in rectangular blocks yep. of chocolate. In the new product version, they have shaved off the corners. They made the product round. Right. That saved them about five grams per package. Oh. So that's another creative example of shrinkflation. It looks nice, the round ones. Yeah and you also get less for your money. I guess it adds up for them because every little bit of chocolate for the billions of chocolate bars they sell. All in the interest of lowering costs, increasing margins, because that's what they have to do. They're mm. banking on the fact that consumers don't always check carefully. I'm gonna be checking from now onwards. Whew. Earlier, I showed you some of the products that have shrunk in size over the years. Whoa. Oh, it's thinner. Wow. Very deceiving. A lot of companies downsize products because they don't want to increase their prices, which could be inevitable due to inflation. But what I wanted to know is... Would you prefer to pay more for the same product? That's inflation. What costs $4 may cost four fifty in the future. Or do you prefer to still only pay $4 but get less of the same product? You place your votes. And most people prefer to pay more and get the same quantity. You know what? I'm like them. I feel I'd rather pay more because I know exactly what it is I'm paying for. So I choose inflation instead of shrinkflation. Derek Goh has spent more than 17 years helping brands dig deep into consumer psyche and preferences across Asia. He's going to share with me why some companies choose to downsize instead of increase price. So I went out and I polled about 80 people. About 60% said they would rather pay more. They don't mind paying for inflation. I think for those who are willing to pay more for the same product, I think they are either the brand loyalists or that brand is simply the market leader. They are in that very enviable position where even a price increase won't lead to any decrease in um, loyalty or purchase. That also illustrates how brands themselves don't really have confidence or knowledge about how price elastic their products are. Mm. Why is that? Because downsize them, something that they can control versus the unknown of if I increase price, will I scale my consumers? By not making it public to the customers, they are riding on a consumer's blind faith that the product they're buying is still the same. 
But what happens when the consumers find out that the product isn't the same? For some, it's a betrayal of trust from a company's perspective. It's simply better strategy to pour more money into increasing your brand value, brand stickiness, compared to trying to always cut costs. Because think about it, Singapore is a huge market where we have right. a lot of product choices. So make your brand more loved such that even if you increase the price, mm. your customers will still stay with you. That's correct, yes. At this stage, in Singapore, we only see price table. We don't know the unit dollar value of product. It's not a practice in retail. To stop this, consumers need to be more savvy, read labels more clearly. There is currently no data in Singapore on which products have shrunk in size. So I reached out to so you. 50 cents used to get me this carton of milk. And now... And ask which items have you noticed shrinking? Within a day, I got over 40 responses. You asked me to find out if these products have indeed shrunk in size. So there's only one thing left for me to do now. To verify with the companies themselves. I'll soon reveal the truth. So you guys wrote in to ask me which of these products had shrunk in size. I contacted all of these companies and some of them did reply. Nestle said their Maggi instant noodles pack sizes have not been reduced in any way. Nissan also said their Myojo noodles cake has remained the same. Ochanki said because their puffs are individually produced, the weight will vary but they should remain a minimum of 100 grams. Coca-Cola admitted to reducing the size of their Coke cans from 330 ml to 320 ml in 2017 and attributed the move to increases in commodity costs. The other companies declined or did not respond to requests for comment by the time this episode was aired. There's actually nothing illegal about what the companies are doing as long as the volume and weight of the product are clearly labelled. And from the looks of it, shrinkflation is likely here to stay. In fact, it could even get worse. So I wonder if there's a way for us to outsmart shrinkflation. Kendra Tan is a lifestyle content writer whose focus is on budget shopping and bargain hunting. Hi Kendra! Right. So, can we beat shrinkflation and do you have any tips for me? Okay, so unfortunately, we cannot beat shrinkflation. Okay. However, I do have some tips on how you can save on your next grocery yeah? shopping. How do we do that? I will yeah. always prepare a shopping list and check the prices on this app called Price Party. This app will let me know where I can get the cheapest product. Oh, so it compares all the supermarkets that are in this area? Yes, they will give you the amount that you are buying and what the packet contains so that you know exactly what you are buying. Okay, so what do you mean if I want to get some apples, for example, they may yes. show me the price per 300 grams. Yes. Then I can calculate actually how much each apple costs. Yes. Okay, great, let's go shopping. We're getting some assorted biscuit. Red tin here. Yes. Is it the same? It is the same product, but at different weights. Assorted weight. biscuit, 700 grams for $5.70 versus 300 grams for $2.95. So this is more value for money. Yes. So one thing about going shopping is that when you buy in bulk, it is usually cheaper. So right now, I would like you to pull out your calculator okay. and help me calculate how much this costs per 100 grams. Okay, let's see. So it's <laughs> 4, 25, 300 grams. I got $1.65 for 100 grams in that box. This is your $1.73 for 100 grams for this. Yes. So wow. as you can tell, the smaller packet has actually more value than the bigger packet here. Bigger isn't always necessarily cheaper. Yeah, you always have to calculate the unique price to know which one is more worth it. Okay. 
Ah, okay. So this is a house brand. It's cheaper? Not only is it cheap, my family and I have been buying house brands for many years. We find that house products is not usually affected by shrinkflation. House brands tend to be cheaper because supermarket chains can cut out the middleman and save on advertising costs. Oh, don't we need some coke? That's on your list too, right? Uh, later I'll bring you somewhere else where they sell this cheaper. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Kendra, where are we off to next? We are off to get our drinks, snacks and tissue paper. Because uh, it's actually cheaper here. So, we'll be getting the coke over here. Ah, okay. It is uh, 55 cents here. Wow, that's almost half the price. That's why I told you that I didn't want to buy it just now. Budget stores generally offer heavily discounted prices because of various factors, like buying overstocked items from suppliers. So, uh, even though the prices here are really cheaper than mm -hmm. usual, there are still ways that we can save. Oh, is it? By buying vouchers online on a shopping app to offset. They currently have a promotion where you pay one cent for a one dollar fifty voucher. So that means you get one dollar fifty cents off your purchase without any minimum spend. Wow, not bad. Yeah. So essentially, I get a few bags of free chips. Yeah. So five seventy five, but we ended up only paying four dollars and twenty three cents. Pretty cool. So based on what we got today, how much money did we end up saving? Around ten dollars, and we would have actually paid around sixty dollars. Today's bill is around fifty dollars. Mm, okay. So do your research, shop around, and you can end up saving some money. Yeah. So we may not be able to beat shrinkflation, but at least now I'm more aware of hidden downsizing and that I could unknowingly be paying the same for less. Which means I have to be even smarter about the way I shop. Because at the end of the day, every single cent counts. <laughs>